Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. Mr. Terry, as I continue my search for historical knowledge found here on the internet. All right, today's video comes from our awesome patrons, and they voted on a channel favorite from a channel that a lot of you may have found my channel through, and that is the Salmonella Academy. So there are still a bunch of Salmonella videos I have not seen yet, although I've watched a lot, but man, there's a lot of content. But anyway, the video that was chosen this week by our awesome patrons was Where Religious Symbols Come From. Okay, so this is great. You know, symbology and religion is so huge. A lot of, you know, things that kind of have become like logos, almost in a way, and become a big part of religious worship. It'll be interesting to see what, you know, where, where some of those actually come from, because there's some I don't really specifically know. And I'm sure Sam's going to put his awesome comedic twist on it. So I'm excited to check this out. All right, if you would like to vote on uh, videos and uh, have a little more influence on some of the videos that I react to, consider joining our Patreon account. It's down below. There's a link there. But either way, thank you for being here. If you haven't subbed, um, love to have you around in our community. And there's a lot of at you that are a lot of you out there that are watching videos but aren't necessarily subbed. And I put out a lot of stuff, so not just reaction videos, all kinds of other different things. So make sure that you hit that sub button, enable the notifications, because I'd love to see more of you. All right, the original video link is down below. Make sure you support Sam, give it the view, like, subscribe, all that stuff if you have not done that yet. And let's go ahead and get started. All right, so again, uh, origin of religious symbols. Cool. Hey, kids. Hey, kids. Hey. It's That Happened Thursday. So today, I'll discuss where different religious symbols come from. All right, pre-test here. We got Christianity from left to right. We got Christianity. We got the cross from crucifixion of Christ. Star of David. I don't know a lot about the origination of the Star of David as a symbol for, for Judaism. I know it gets famous for Jews having to wear that on the Holocaust or whatever. Um, and then we've got uh, the the moon and star, uh, Christmas moon. This is for Islam. I don't know exactly what this refers to, if it has anything to do with Muhammad's um, uh, uh, night ride, um, if that has something to do with that. we got some yin-yang, Taoism. And then some uh, Hinduism um, with some uh, um, characters there. So let's see. Oh, wait, hold on. Last thing. Probably earn myself a place in every version of hell with <laughs> these drawings are. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. His arms are huge, though. All right. Anyway. First up is Christianity. All right. As most of you know, Jesus of Nazareth was Nailed crucified it. despite being supposedly sinless. Wait, I only read for the article. Most of you what? know, Jesus of Nazareth was crucified despite being supposedly sinless. I only read it for the articles, I swear. It's a playboy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so the cross is representative of his martyrdom. Personally, I always thought choosing the cross of all things to signify the whole religion was at least a little silly. Right, my prophet, he was a great dude, spread peace and love all along the land, performed many bountiful miracles, and then right at the end, he fell face first into a fucking bear trap and died. So that's our symbol, whole religion bear trap. <laughs> that's it. It's kind of an interesting point that he's trying to make there. Um, I mean, it depends on how you, how you interpret it, but from a lot of people, especially if you're an outsider perspective, it's like, that is what you're doing? You're focusing on the, the method of, of execution? Peace, love, compassion, and bear trap. Next up <laughs> is the Jewish Star of David. It's okay. been used now yeah, and then know. since the 11th century, but it only really got popular around the 1800s. Oh. There's no real special... Wait. <laughs> He's got captions on everything, and, and I'm missing them. Next up is the Jewish Star of David. It's been used... Okay, so it's 1000 AD, so it didn't really didn't get going until the Middle Ages. Okay, so it's not it's an ancient symbol. What is that? I don't know. Now and then since the 11th century, but it only really got... 1850. Okay, 1850 now. What are those? A Jewish. <laughs> Popular a around Jewish. the 1800s. There's no real special meaning behind it. They really just took a random symbol that was kind of around uh -huh. called the hexagram it? and made it their own. Bro, check out my new religious symbol. <gasps> uh, I'm pretty sure you didn't come up with that. Pretty sure that's a thing elementary schoolers do in their notebook when they're bored. Nah, man, not once it gets popular. Then everybody will think of my religion when they see it. Whatever floats your boat. Jimmy, what is this in your notebook? Oh, it's just a little doodle. Jimmy, listen to me. We are Catholics. <laughs> now get over here and erase this blasphemy. But mom, I... Now! Next is Islam. <laughs> do, you guys, do you kids even know the, the, that symbol? 
a 90s brand for 90s kids like myself called Stussy, and that's what their logo looked like. And you would just you'd make uh, three lines and then three lines and then connect them. Yeah, it was totally. See, before we had phones when we were bored, we would doodle. Now get over here and erase this blasphemy. But mom, I now next is Islam. So the star in Crescent, Crescent actually used to represent the Ottoman Empire, right. which ruled over most of the Islamic world during the 1800s. Okay, so I don't know if it originated there though, but it, yeah, it was a big part. It was th theirs was red though. However, the empire dissolved after World War One, right. and its symbol was later adopted to represent Islam as a whole around the 1970s. Hey, Rob, guess. So yeah, you, you could see that symbology big with the Ottoman Empire. Like for example, when the Ottoman Empire sieged um, uh, Constantinople in 1453, when they took over the city, the Hagia Sophia, the the, the big Christian church, um, was then basically changed into being a mosque, right, for for uh, religious worship in Islam, and used to have a big cross on the top, and they actually replaced it with the crescent moon and the star. Um, so showing it was definitely a, an important symbol being put on mosques by then. All right, what do we got with the Cubs here? Later adopted to represent Islam as a whole around the 1970s. Hey, Rob, guess what? I'm starting a new baseball team. Isn't that the Chicago Cubs logo? Oh, please, they're barely even a team. When's the last time they did anything? Nobody's using this symbol because nobody wants to buy their merchandise. Perfectly good logo. I'm taking it for my team. Couldn't that lead to a bit of confusion? Sure. Only because they'll see a guy in a Cubs jersey who can actually catch a pop fly. Next up oh, is Taoism. Snap. All right, so the yin yang, or as they call it, the Taijitu, actually applies to a lot of Asian religions. Just the Taoists use it as their primary symbol today. Sure. It originated. <laughs> Confucius. Is that supposed to be Confucius? Okay, so we got Confucius over there. We got, I guess, Buddhism. And then we got, of course, multi armed deity in Hinduism. Very nice. Of Asian religions. Just, the Taoists use it as their primary symbol today. It originated in China, dating back to the 11th century AD. Although it's had a lot of different looks over the years, it's always... Ooh, hold on. Which one do you guys like the best? You like the teardrop, comma-looking one on the left? I don't know, I actually kind of like the, the present one. Now, from what I understood, and I'm sure you'll explain, I thought it was a day and night duality kind of thing, but let's see. To the 11th century AD, although it's had a lot of different looks over the years, it's always represented the same idea of balance between contrasting forces in the world. Mm. Okay, Carl, balance of good and evil. Let's see your design. Not bad, not bad. All right, what about All you, right. Steve? What Oof. the hell is that? Oh, well, you said balance between good and bad in the world, so I, I drew a grilled cheese sandwich shaking hands with a razor blade covered dildo. Okay, all other questions aside, why is a grilled cheese the best thing you could think of? Uh, have you ever had a grilled cheese? Like a real one with butter just smeared all over it, crust nice and crispy, sprinkle some onions in there, get out. Okay. So you know how when people are meditating in movies, they do that obnoxious home thing? Well, apparently, Om is actually the name of the popular Hindu symbol. And repeating its oh, name a lot. I think I've heard that before, yeah. The Om that you say for isn't that supposed to help with is it breathing and your meditation and stuff like that out is said to be a sacred incantation which is why it's said during things like rituals or yoga uh are they they're killing sheep huh no the actual meaning behind the symbol Ooh. is said to represent a load of different things depending on who you ask or when basically whatever your purpose is it's a one-size-fits-all prayer okay let's look at the different things so this is different meanings of it. Soul, universal truth, self, life, energy. The, the McRib is back. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a McRib. Is it actually good? Anyway. Cosmic infinity, knowledge. Wipe with your left hand so you can eat with your right. That's pop pooping. Yeah, that's what they said back in the day, man, because you just, it's like, hey, you're going to get kind of gross because, you know, cleanliness in old times. So, you know, just make sure you're not cross-contaminating. <laughs> Insert prayer here. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty. Ah, uh, this is taking forever. No, you know what? I'm going to make my own religion. Yeah. And our prayers, one syllable long. We're just going to go, good, whenever we feel like <laughs> praying. That's it. Dinner table, good. <laughs> 
But how will you get any meaning out of that? It's my own word. I can give it whatever meaning I want. True. So I'll just give it all the meanings. It'll mean the soul. It'll mean the universe. It'll mean I don't have to recite any more long-winded bullshit. Anyway, pass the corn. So unfortunately, <laughs> that's all we have time for for Ooh. today. At some point, I'll do a second video covering some of the more obscure religious symbols. Okay, we got the wheel. Is that for, I mean, out of India, uh, that ends up becoming... I mean, I know it's the wheel's been used in a lot of things. You see it back in Indus Valley script, some of the oldest writing that we have. Um, but they use that in modern-day India uh, for us to do with, like, textiles, right? And taking pride in that, producing your own stuff. And, like, back in uh, the 1940s when India got its independence, um, one of Gandhi's big things was doing that, start making your own clothes and that sort of thing. And, and India's history has been founded as a um, basically the first, first cultivation of cotton uh, in ancient times came back from India, and they were the leading cotton producer for most of human history. Anyway, I don't know what the middle one is. Then we got we got apple or something. Does for apple? Is that for apple? Like the apple? But I don't know if there was a thing on the top. Anyway, for for today. At some point, I'll do a second video covering some of the more obscure. Did you ever do symbols. a second? But until tomorrow, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. Bye, Sam. <laughs>